is that a baby oviraptor? Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this. Look at this. Look at his little head feather crest thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there's baby plants. Yes, okay. Well, oh my gosh, there's a lot of the little monks. Oh, this is too cute. This is too cute. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for all of them running in a little feathery tailed group together. Oh my gosh. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology, the Cretaceous Mongolia edition. And we are still doing our biomes of plenty. Oh my gosh, look at all of the little monks go by. There goes a hungry uh, velociraptor. I think he's going to find plenty of food. Look at all of them. They're so precious. Look at the little tails swishing around the place. It is like a little purple bouquet of feathery dino tails there. I am so happy about this. But welcome back, everyone. I can't believe that our biodome is still functioning. We left them alone for another three game months. And I had put down quite a few more velociraptors. I was actually very nervous about the number of velociraptors that we added in because we now officially have three territories of velociraptors put down and that's quite a lot if you consider the fact that we only have I think one territory of each of our herbivores but I think we had built up quite the overpopulation of the protoceratops which are still absolutely 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 do precious if you ask me oh my goodness Siri I've got dinosaurs on the brain so I'm like tripping over my D's but all right, let's pop up here and see how everything is going from up high. I have to admit, I was 100% prepared to come back and there was like nothing here. But we actually do have quite a few creatures, not only still alive, but the populations look healthy. We still have 12 juveniles in the Protoceratops territory. We still have like some pretty swift reproductive rates on those guys too. There's seven juvenile oviraptors. We have got, uh, let's see, velociraptors doing good. Uh, these velociraptors have two babies. Oh my goodness. So it looks like they only have about two juveniles at a time. I wonder if I can find a juvenile velociraptor. Is this one of them? Are you a little juvenile velociraptor? No, <gasps> you definitely are. Oh, they're both right here, you guys. They're both sound asleep. Oh, that's precious. They're sleeping under the ginkgo tree, both of them. Wow, it kind of looks like they have two heads right now. Let's, if we have a two-headed velociraptor. That's, I don't think, I mean, that's one for the fossil records, if you ask me. That is one for the fossil records. All right, let's go ahead and pop in and add in some more plants. It's looking pretty bare in this back corner. So let's toss in some more of these little trochodirons. Uh, let's see. So they can go down here. They kind of remind me in their, their bush shape and kind of just the general leaf shape of azalea plants. So I'm a little bit biased to them because I do love the azaleas. But let's add in some more of our beautiful magnolias because they are quite lovely too. I love when they flower. And it is so exciting to see so many of you leave tons of comments like talking about when flowering plants and when different grasses would really start to show up in the fossil records. I was so happy to see so many of you guys get just as excited as I do about plant reproduction. It really it brought a tear of pride to my eye. All right, where are you going, little buddy? It's baby velociraptor's first meal. Are you really going to try that on for size? Because I feel like, nope. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like that's a little bit above your bite grade, buddy. And then while we're following him, we can just kind of like sprinkle these beautiful cycads behind us. Oh, he got somebody. Oh, look at that. He got the baby oviraptor. Oh my goodness. All right, our oviraptors might really have to cope. Yes, and we have got more Taito coins. Let's see. We have got a uh, good diversity on the plants and it looks like it's going up a little bit. And the animal diversity and the health. I can't believe of all the things I'm actually not driving to extinction. <laughs> the dinosaurs. The dinosaur biome is the one thing I'm not driving to extinction after driving the other three to extinction. That cracks me up. I can't believe that. I, I would not have thought that that would be the outcome with my handling of our biodomes and Taito Ecology, but there you go. I'm not going to complain because I'm really happy that we're able to get some of them up and going. 
All right, let's also get maybe some termites tucked in the back here so that we can make sure that all of the detritus can be cleaned up. And then let's get some of the uh, pollinators back here. So we'll get a few of the little um, mosquitoes tucked into the back corner too, because we have big dreams, you guys really big dreams. Now that we have managed to get a little bit of a balance going with apparently being able to keep some things alive. Wow, and look at these guys. So cool. The cornus plants have actually had babies. Look at that. They are spreading all over the place too. It is really exciting to come back again and again and find so many little baby plants popping up. That's really wonderful because we definitely have the hungry, hungry herbivores that are more than happy to help out with chomping those guys. So let's see, what else can I put down here? Then let's add some ginkgo trees. I really love the ginkgo trees. There we go. And then maybe we can put down some more of the big guys back here too, because we need lots of those big trees having babies and spreading through the biodome. If we are going to be able to start thinking even bigger on the dinosaurs and building our way up to the truly large guys, because I think it'd be really fun to add in some of the really big, the Gallimimus, the Saurolopus, Oh my goodness, all of the things that I'm going to completely mispronounce but absolutely love to see. Look at this one. I've never even heard about this guy before. I definitely need to figure out who he is. I want to read his entry. I want to be able to unlock him. And if we are going to be adding in the big guys and trying to get more plants really spreading all over the place, we need to unlock some of the zones in our biodome too so that they can start to spread beyond the boundaries. So I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Here's zone two, and we can unlock it for 50 Taito coins, and you have to go around in a big circle. Okay. You can view the global stats in the center. Um, you know what, guys? Let's go for it. We're going to go ahead and open up zone two. <gasps> Ta-da! And now we have zone two. So hopefully we'll have some of the plants start spreading across the border. It looks like this little monk is already quite eager to be right at the edge. He's on the forefront of the wild frontier for our little dinosaurs. Let's throw in some nice, beautiful plants back here. We'll get the jungles up and going one day. One day in the future, we will actually be able to proudly call this place truly the Dino Jungle. So let's get some more ferns. Let's get some ferns done. In fact, I just noticed, I think our ferns are gone. I think out of everything that we have in this biodome, do we? Oh, no, here's some ferns. I, I just wasn't remembering any. All right, these guys are finishing up a little bit of food here. Are you opportunistically eating some of the dead? I think you are. I think that this little guy over here is actually eating right under the Velociraptor's legs. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. You are playing with fire. Look at him. He's just laying right inside of the, the embrace of the, of the Velociraptor. That's amazing. Well, as long as he's happy, I suppose. But yeah, I think we need to get more ferns down and I'm going to look at how long it takes for the ferns to usually reproduce because having a whole bunch of these small, uh, easy, hopefully to breed little plants, let's check. Reproduction is actually not as quick as I would potentially hope, but having a whole bunch of them down might be a good idea so that we can start adding in some of the teensy tiny itty bitty little guys. But actually, I think the teensiest tiniest little guys are mostly strict insectivores, these little ones. And I want to put in some of the little deltas to be able to chase and eat them as well. I wonder if the delta theorydums, which of course I'm going to mispronounce, I'm so sorry guys, it's just difficult for me. But I wonder if they also will actually be opportunistic scavengers as well, because the little monk definitely was just opportunistically scavenging from under a velociraptor. Like the velociraptor was right there <laughs> and he didn't care. He just wanted some food. So there he went. So I might want to look into that. We're just going to toss down a wide, healthy variety of trees. We'll get more mushrooms put down in case somebody wants to nibble on those if they get really desperate and hungry. Uh, and I really want to keep up our horsetails just coming up along this waterway. I really like that look. And a lot of you guys really like the look of like creating a little oasis with the horsetails too. And we'll put down a whole bunch of mosquitoes along the waterway too. I think that'd be an interesting little feature. 
So let's tuck those there and then we can get in. And actually I forgot that opening up more of the zones inside of our biodome is actually really going to help us when it comes to getting more energy. The more zones you have opened up, the more energy you can have at once. And I totally forgot about that. All right, we'll put down a few of the little pollinators. And I think, what? A group of them has died? Oh, we have some really, really hungry. Oh, in zone one? Where? Oh, I don't think I'm going to get any notes, but I think we have too many little monks, you guys. And I guess the velociraptors are going to be more focused on the other guys, and they're not really going to be eating any of the little monks. So, wait, did he just die? I just put a population down, like, right here, and did it just die? Is that the population that died? Hello? Huh. Well, I'll keep an eye on that. I don't think that's the population that just died, but we'll have to just watch that. All right, we'll tuck some of those back there. We'll get some horsetails started on this side so that hopefully they can spread happily and healthily along our little river this way. I'm so excited to come back as like more and more time passes and hopefully everything will be okay. I do think the monk population is a little bit high and it doesn't seem like the overoptors are particularly interested in really actively trying to hunt them. I don't know if the little deltas, being as small as they are, could hunt the monks. It might be interesting to see. Uh, the Dino Curious, I'm just going to call them the little dinos. Uh, they're omnivores, but they're large omnivores. I don't know if they would bother with something as small as a little monk. Uh, there goes another proto or a protoceratops over there with the velociraptor. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Let's add in. I kind of want to add in these teeny tiny guys. We're going to focus on small details and small dinosaurs, or should I say prehistoric mammals today. So we'll focus on like putting down some ferns. Uh, occasionally we'll throw in a big tree. Often we will throw in these cycads because they seem to really endure more than anything else and they spread like wildfire. I very much appreciate their reproductive rate at this moment. They might also put down a lot of fruit. Maybe that's one of the reasons they reproduce so quickly. And then, oh yes, more Taito coins. Thank goodness. Where are you going, Overaptor? So this Overaptor is hungry. I want to see what he's going to, like he's getting really hungry. He's burning that energy up running. So I want to see where he goes to eat. Okay, so he's going for the Cycad. And now he's feeling better. And the Cycad doesn't even look like it's taken any damage. It's just a baby Cycad, but it seems to have endured being the source of that guy's appetite just fine. So we'll put in some big guys back here too. These are very helpful. And we'll see if some of these guys mixed in helps. As time goes on, I might be a little bit more discerning about where we start smacking down these plants. But for now, I just want them to start spreading all over the place. And we might we might do some like jumps sometimes too. Are those all little monks? Oh no, they're mushrooms. For some reason up high, I thought there were a ton of little monks, and I was a little bit concerned for a second there. Uh, you know, no, let's put in some cycads. I feel like the cycads are just amazing, and they are doing a really good job of keeping our uh, herbivores alive, and they're doing a really good job of spreading and helping us out. And actually, before we add in anyone else, because we have been doing such a good job with the balance that we have so far, I'm kind of tempted to go ahead and skip time instead. Our biodome is now two years, four months, and one week old. So normally I leave it gone for like three months, come back, and we can kind of like study things. I wonder, I am feeling good about our dome. I am feeling good about our dome, and I'm, I'm feeling like our ecosystem might be able to live without our help for six months. Uh, so let's put down a whole bunch more Let's do it. Let's do it, you guys. We're going to live on the edge today. I'm going to put down a whole bunch more of the mosquitoes really quickly. And I'm going to put down some more termites really quickly. Kind of moving into some of our new areas. I'm going to put down some patches of trees and pollinators. Uh, we'll put down some termites back here as well. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds like a good idea. So let's actually, let's try speeding things along mostly with the intention of hopefully getting our plants to really start spreading and see how our balance of predator and prey is currently laid out 
So we're going to put down some of our fast reproducing cycads. Uh, it seems like these cornice guys also reproduce pretty quickly. The ginkgos are, are fairly fast at reproducing as well. So I might put down some ginkgos because they're taller. I might put down some cycads because they definitely seem to be doing pretty good. And we're gonna skip six months, which I don't think I've ever really done. Or if I have, it's been a very long time since we've done that. But I think that's worth the risk. I think that we might end up having an explosion of plant life and hopefully feeling pretty balanced about what's going on in our biodome. So why not? Why not? Why not? All right, let's wing on and get some ginkgos. And then I need to make sure that this area is covered. I think it's covered by some mosquitoes already. So we'll see if the ginkgos will have... Will they have pollinators? Yes, they will. All right. All right, let's do it, you guys. We're going to try this out. We're gonna, we're gonna see what it's like if we allow six months to pass in our biodome. I'm a little nervous, but I think that this could be a really cool experiment. So, let's do this. Yep, we're gonna skip time. Boink. Okay. <laughs> That's the biggest skip we've ever done. We've now got 84 Taito Coins back for that investment of, uh, that investment of 40 Taito Coins. And how did it go, guys? Hi! Oh, look at this! We've got little baby cycads over here! Awesome! And over here, we've just, we've still got our ginkgo. <gasps> we've got these babies! We've got a forest actually spreading! Oh my gosh! Maybe I'll start doing that more often! How's everybody doing? Like, populations are fine? Sweet! Okay, wait, the monks are getting pretty hungry. But I think that's because they're made up mostly of babies. So I think they'll probably balance themselves out because there's plenty of insects everywhere. So is that just because they're all clustered right here? Oh, I think that's because they were all just born. <laughs> we have a lot of little monks, guys, and they're like sleeping on the remains of their siblings. Look at all of them. Wow. Oh, they're just flopping over. Oh my gosh, look at them. They're on the run. They're on the run. They're so cute. Oh no. I love them. Oh my gosh. They're so precious, you guys. All right, let's get some more things down. The velociraptors are definitely happily and eagerly diving in on the buffet. Uh, and we're going to get down some more of these big guys at the back to hopefully reproduce like wildfire. Not that their reproduction is very quick, actually. Their reproduction is very slow. Uh, and who eats them? Who eats them? Who eats them? Uh, let's see. Notes, food uses, comb-like growths for the animals to eat. Uh, I guess we're going to have to just wait and see who decides to eat them. And then we can put some cornice over here as well, which are in their flowering state. Or I guess they always have that really pretty, like, light coloring. That was really satisfying, actually. I didn't expect that time jump to be quite as exciting as it was. But I think that we should probably do that a little bit more often. I mean, everybody over here has, to, like, been in... <laughs> they've been extinct before, so I don't think they're really going to care if I start skipping time around a little bit. Uh, and we might put down a whole bunch of... Look at all the cycad spread. I'm so proud of them. We might put down a whole bunch of the horsetails kind of along this line as well. So I think that's what we're going to start doing. Instead of having to be a manual gardener and kind of like painstakingly carefully grooming every little inch of our biodome, I think we will start kind of setting things free, putting down some babies, stepping back, taking the pedal off the metal, so they say, and just starting to skip time and see how things go when we feel pretty confident. So let me put that down. Now these guys, yeah, they have decent-ish reproduction. I'm just not noticing them reproduce that quickly, but I'm sure they do. So we'll make little patches. It's kind of like you put down little seeds by putting each territory patch down and then you sort of step back and let them spread on their own over time. And I mean, all the populations are doing really good. Velociraptors are just a teensy bit hungry. Somebody's been eating the fish, what? Is that the oviraptors? I wonder who's been eating the fish. That's really cool. <laughs> I think the oviraptors eat the fish and see they're coming back for these cycads again. All right, good. I'm gonna put down another patch over here. All right. Well, I actually feel really good about that. Let's try it again, guys. Let's continue to see and we'll we'll start being a little bit more aggressive with our time skips then. Let's do it. Yeah, let's skip for another six months. Let's see what happens. Maybe this is the way to actually manage a biodome. All right, 83 back. Not quite as many. 
Oh no! Okay, never mind. <gasps> we have apparently caused a little bit of a kerfuffle. Uh, let's pull back for a second. Let's slow time down for one thing. We'll pull back and look. How's it looking? I think we're spreading. We've got baby cycads starting to move into the new areas. I see the ferns have started to spread around the place. We've got more baby cycads. They're really good at that. We're starting to see some of the bigger leafy things spread out. Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Where's all of our animals? I see a velociraptor. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <gasps> Oh my gosh, we almost killed everything! Oh no! <laughs> Too many skips! Too many skips! All right, guys. Well, apparently we had a few mini Velociraptor populations for that. We're gonna need to try to balance things out a little bit. We're putting down the Protoceratops again. Uh, we have one velociraptor literally on the verge of death it's just one of them i don't think that yeah the 11 weeks until the eggs that it has hatches so we're gonna put down the little monks over here and i learned a lesson about skipping time basically it is definitely a tricky thing to do we're gonna put the rover raptors down it's definitely a trickier thing to do than i was giving credit for we did great the first skip we didn't do so great the next couple skips, and I wonder why. We have an abundant area of plants, at least, that hopefully we will be able to help out all of our herbivores to enjoy. Uh, but we definitely ran into some problems. Maybe three populations of Velociraptors with only one population of Protoceratops and Little Monks was uh, not enough to support it, for sure. So, I wonder... It's a dangerous game to play with those protoceratops though, but I wonder if we have a big enough and healthy enough forest that we can put in two populations of protoceratops over here. I'm gonna do it. And then we might even, here I'm gonna put down some of these little flowers somewhere to you. Okay, come here little flowers. Try not to get eaten just yet. And there's some little monks over here. And I think I'm going to put in one population of Velociraptors kind of in the back corner where our original one was. And we'll see if we can kind of gently tweak things back into balance that way. But that was fine. It was a little bit hectic, but fine. And I think that's definitely a more helpful way to get our plants spreading than manually waiting and placing and waiting and placing because our plants are definitely spreading. It's not nearly as fast as I was hoping, but it is happening. Uh, well, look at that. We've got some of our little little itty bitty tiny guys spreading oh and it's so cool because you can't put the plants on top of each other yourself but it seems like they can grow on top of each other which is really exciting and now I just need to be patient until I can put down another population of velociraptors oh this population is bouncing back huzzah all right so we'll try with two populations of velociraptors and we'll see where that gets us and I might put down one more population of monks I'm not sure. All right, we're gonna get more aggressive with our experiments, I think. I think that's gonna be kind of the key. And I am going to, these guys are spreading just fine. <laughs> and I am going to try to keep the plants spreading really quickly because the more forest we can get in, the higher the concentration of herbivores we can support, which means the cooler we can make our carnivores. And I know that's what a lot of you guys are really excited to see. So, all right. Didn't do so good with that, that second skip. A little tempted to go ahead and try skipping a, a tiny patch, but let's see. Yeah, it's still two weeks before we would have our cooldown period, and it would really make it worth skipping time. But we'll come back next time, and we'll see how things went, have gone. Like, if we have, a, if we have made some better choices with the populations that we currently have, and if we'll be able to sustain them. And if we have enough little plants spreading, then we can just kind of build up that big food pyramid and food chain and keep everything moving and alive, which is the goal. Don't kill the things that have already gone extinct, Siri. That's all you have to do. <laughs> But all right, guys, let's get down another little patch of cycads over here because they are so wonderful for spreading around the place for us. And then maybe one of the big guys, if it wants to pop up. Nope, I'm out of energy. But all right, hopefully this will work better. I'm really excited to see that our plants are starting to spread a lot more aggressively. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.